Good morning. This is Jeff at Southwest MLS with your January 2020 update. Hopefully your year started off well. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump in and talk about um, a, a feature in Flex that um, became available back in December. And that's the ability now when you log into your Flex to go right to the home page where I'm at now or right to a quick search. And I actually have mine set to do that. So I will go um, show you under the settings now uh, so you can be able to turn that on and off. And what that really means is when you log into Flex the first time each day, uh, it's going to take you right to this your main quick search with a map on it, um, as opposed to just going to the normal home page that you've seen. So to do that, you want to go in your Flex menu on your computer. Under the Preference section, you'll want to look for the option called General Preferences. There are a lot in here. I might point out one other two features that you can do in here. Um, but right now, I'm showing you how to change your um, your login. Uh, and that's the very first, I mean, sorry, it's the very last option on your preferences at the very bottom. It says first page viewed after login. And I have mine set to quick search, or you could go back to default dashboard and then hit save. While we're in here, might as well mention a couple of other things. Um, in your preferences, one that you might want to enable is called the expiring listing notification. If you check that box, you can set a specific number of days that Flex will send you an email letting you know you have an upcoming expired listing. Nothing worse than uh, getting a call from the seller on a Saturday wondering why they're getting calls from other realtors and then you see the listing expired um, and you want to make it active, but Flex is, MLS is not open till Monday to take your paperwork. So if you set that for seven days or two days or 10 days, you can get an email um, say, a reminder, then you can get that extension signed if you are going to continue marketing that listing. So there's your dashboard, how you change that. Um, that is a new uh, feature available in Flex. One other highlighted feature I'm going to talk about, when you're in the Flex screen at the upper right corner um, is a drop down menu for help. Flex has gone and added some new um, training, learning options available to you in here. So if you can, you can go to what's new to learn out, highlight some of the things we talk about in our monthly videos, upcoming trainings that Flex offers, user guides, and also uh, video training. So just with a click of a button through the help menu, there are some short videos that I can watch uh, that provide me tips and information on using the features in the MLS. Let's move on and provide a little accurate data tip, some information on zoning codes on MLS listings. Um, this has to do with the Albuquerque IDO zoning. As you're entering a new listing in the MLS, if it's in Albuquerque, um, then you're going to want to get ready at the zoning section to pick the appropriate zoning code. Um, this applies also in Rio Rancho, Berlin, and other parts of the state. Um, and it's a full zoning list A to Z. So um, since half the zoning codes we found are um, maybe inaccurate with Albuquerque, we just want to reinforce the importance of going through this list and picking the right zoning. So if you're in Albuquerque city limits in Bernalillo County, your zoning code list is actually a separate zoning list at the bottom uh, denoted with a little asterisk symbol. If you can see, there's two alphabetical lists in zoning, and we just have to go to the very bottom and pick um, the right one. I want to avoid the hesitancy to put R1 for an Albuquerque home uh, because it's probably going to be R1A, R1B, R1C, or D. So it's helpful to know here's a couple of ways you can find that zoning code. Um, in the input form of Flex, we do have a link that says click here that takes you to the IDEO zoning lookup tool where you can put in the address and it tells you the zoning. I've also got a Google search pulled up and all I did there was search, search ABQ IDEO zoning. I'll go to the first search result and there is links to an interactive map, um, an advanced viewer, viewer um, that you can use to look that up. And that's where you'll type in your Albuquerque address and it will zoom into that property and tell you the appropriate zoning code and you should be able to find it in that list. So avoid putting R1 in Albuquerque. Uh, I could find a couple hundred right now that we're trying to make efforts to 
uh, have those brokers put in the right zoning code. While we're here, I'll show you one more thing about IDO zoning. Within the flex map screen that you might use to draw radius shapes or search on, we do have an overlay list in the upper right corner. And one of those overlays that you can turn on is Albuquerque zoning. It's a very busy map with overlay and it's best used when you zoom in close to that property or parcel. And that will identify what the zoning is. So again, it's not R1, it would be R1C for these properties around 11th Street in San Lorenzo. Okay, moving on, let's talk about Remind for a moment. Um, we do uh, update this ongoing blog. It's an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions on Remind. Um, so if you're in there reading that, you might note that we did update some things have been fixed in Remind. So here's a quick recap on um, any kind of bugs or system things that we're dealing with Remind. As of now, residential income and commercial listings still do not link up correctly in from the MLS into Remind. And that means if you happen to pull up a res income multifamily listing or commercial in Flex and you click the Remind button, it's probably not going to open. It's going to give you an error. Um, that's a big deal for us and you, and we're trying to get that worked out. Hopefully, by um, have a good news in the next few weeks. The issue we've had with the HOA names and the HOA fees in a lot of Rio Rancho lots and homes has been fixed. Missing tax data for 2019 um, should be available for our primary counties and state counties in Remind that should have been resolved the end of December. Remind is doing uh, pulling the data uh, for our mortgage and sales history in our market a little bit differently than they were last year. And we should start to see a decrease in the number of inconsistent mortgage and sales records. If you find anything wrong in the data, uh, please you know, let us know, call or just email MLS at gar.com so that we can work with Remind and better understand where these problems are. As far as that, um, there is one change also in within the Remind. Uh, you might have been contacting them through their support page, like calling their toll-free number for technical or walkthrough support. Um, it appears a few weeks ago they did discontinue offering that, that primary tech support number. Uh, support over the phone is still available locally at the MLS help desk. Um, but if you're really wanting to reach out directly with the Remind folks, uh, you'll want to email them, support at remind.com. Or if you're in the middle of using the system, they do have that, that chat window that they should be able to respond very quickly uh, to you through the interface of the, the desktop version. So that's update on Remind. We're going to highlight a couple of uh, upcoming classes coming at GAR uh, for, for MLS. Most of these are taught by Kelly or their webinars by our product vendors. From the GAR website under education, if you go to the calendar, you can filter these classes by free. Because all the MLS classes are free, it's a quicker way to identify these. Um, and we've got classes scheduled, uh, loaded up until through February here. Um, we do have a local Remind class that I'm hosting on February 12th. And um, we have some webinars directly from the product vendors uh, like RPR or HomeSnap or Realtor.com. Um, so take advantage of those free classes so you can get the most out of your MLS. A reminder on production. Um, this is your sales that you represented in the MLS on the buy or listing side. You might have seen our announcements um, on GAR or at our events uh, telling you get your production in by the end of January uh, so that when we pull our annual production for the uh, recognition on certificates that we correctly count you for that sale. So here's a quick snapshot on uh, not a snapshot, but a quick tip for you to go look up your own production and sales to make sure everything is correct. Two ways to do that. You can go in under the flex menu under search and there should be a search called office member. So this is a quick way to look up yourself. And I'm just searching uh, 
pretend this is a realtor account, you would pull up yourself or another realtor in here, anyone can do this, and under these view options, you'll want to check uh, all four of those boxes for listing and selling sides, and then only pick closed for the date range of last year. And this should identify all last year's production that you had. And then you hit view listings. Now this is a non-MLS account and this is oftentimes where you would sign a sale when the buyer's agent was out, was uh, not a GAR member. Um, but in this particular case, you would be looking at your production count. If you've got 173, congratulations on a good year. Um, but it'll have your sales in there and you can look and make sure that nothing's missing and that the credit is assigned to you uh, appropriately. So it's important to know when GAR um, pulls our production, we do only recognize the listing and selling member sides. So if you were a co-agent or co-selling member, that's fine, but GAR will not uh, use that particular co-selling information for the weights uh, to identify the, the volume and sales generated. In Flex, if you want another way to get your production report to check now, you can go into the Flex menu under Statistics and go where it says Inventory and Production. There's over 10 reports in here. So the one that I would probably first start off with is uh, Agent Listing and Sales Summary or um, Production Report. That's second from the very bottom. And that should be a detailed report on all the solds. So if you do that, you know, if you find that there's discrepancies before to the end of the month, you know, contact MLS so we can let you know what you need to do to change that. Sometimes we just need a permission from the listing office. One more update, gross receipts tax. Uh, those tax codes, boundaries um, may change twice a year. I'm at the gross receipts tax page now, operated by Tax and Revenue. They do have the January through June 2020 revised GRT boundaries and tax codes. To my knowledge, there were no change in the tax codes in our, in our local market area. If you do business outside in you know, Farmington, Tau, Santa Fe, or Crucis, <coughs> probably want to check in those boundaries to make sure those didn't change. There is one little minor change to the uh, local boundary. I'm just going to identify that really quickly. Um, that is a recent blog that we did on GAR on January 8th. And this is um, west of 98th Street, south of I-40, where I have my mouse right here. It is just a tiny little chunk. Um, I think it's still land right now that that changed. And that little tiny piece um, didn't appear to be affecting any residential listings, so it's not a significant boundary change. But twice a year, we do let our realtors know about the changes to the gross receipts maps and boundaries. Because when you enter a listing in Flex, you are required to disclose that GRT boundary. It should be under main fields. And it's asking you for the GRT code. We do auto-populate that on a new listing, so oftentimes it's already put in there for you, but it's very helpful for the buyer's agent submitting an offer who needs that information um, to complete the paperwork. So that's our update for January. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next month.